doing house concerts before all this and uh, just seeing some real neat things happen at those concerts. And I said, you know what, I want to be able to reach more people. Can music give new life to a small town? And then you got the moments where the music is just perfect and the night is perfect. Can those moments lead to a national movement to bring back this sense of togetherness? You want to make your community as good as it possibly can. And we're either friends or family, whether it's in the town or the entire county, whatever it is. And so you just want to elevate everything, uh, you know, socially, culturally. Putting their community on the map and taking on big cities for grants to do even more. The secret to their success as they take us to the heart of the story. There is something special happening here. This small town, about 2,500, is coming to live this Sunday. And soon the open green grass will be covered in lawn chairs. Kids will be playing. The sounds of music will fill the air. John Taylor is the man behind it. Raised in this town, he went off to serve and came home with a renewed vision for his home to start a family and build a community. Music has always moved him. Doing house concerts before all this and uh, just seeing some real neat things happen at those concerts. And I said, you know what, I want to be able to reach more people. A grant writing class sparked an idea. Could porch parties work on a larger porch? Maybe at an underused park. A park that, as Galva City Administrator David Dyer tells it, used to buzz with activity. We have a park for a reason because in the old days, of course, the bands would come and play in the band shell or the gazebos, and the community would come out because they didn't have TVs or video games, and that has kind of fallen off. But in this age of binge-watching TV, playing video games, and staying connected with social media, would a social experiment with something called placemaking work? So let's talk about the idea of that and the placemaking, if you will, or a term like that, where you're making a place at a community event to draw people out of their homes and pull them together. And that's what this is all about. It's The music is just that vehicle to pull the people out, to give them a reason to not stay at home, to give them a reason to come out and, and share an experience with the other people around them. And it might be people in the community, it might be people from several hours away. Um, and in terms of the performers, I think it could be from anywhere in the world. He wrote some grants and pulled in a few friends with a common interest in music and community. Tom Campbell runs a small business in another small town. He moved away for a bit, but returned with his growing family. He sees the importance of keeping these towns not just alive, but finding ways to make them thrive. You know, all the stories that you hear about a lot of times from small towns and communities are it's most of the stories about things that are going away things that are you know things that are decaying or dying and that's just been kind of the mantra for you know decades now and uh, so it, it, it makes you feel really good when you are in a place where you feel like things uh, if anything that, that things are growing as a member of the Arts Council, he sees concerts as important tools to help stimulate growth. We hear it all the time from people that are visiting the area that it's pretty unique to have a thriving um, arts organization that, ha that does programming, that supports the arts in the area the way that the Arts Council has, um, and it's, it's really like one of those definitive heartbeats of the community. And talk about heartbeat. Jason Bates lacks the musical beat, but eagerly signed on to help, pouring his heart and soul into what he does. Why is this so important to you in your life? Um, this is a small town. Uh, we're about 2,600 people, and you want to make your community as good as it possibly can. And 
we're either friends or family, whether it's in the town or the entire county, whatever it is. And so you just want to elevate everything, uh, you know, socially, culturally, economically, uh, give a good example for the kids, including mine, in town, um, and just really make everybody's lives a little bit better. And, and the only way to do that is if everybody pitches in a little bit. With the Arts Council behind them, John filed a grant with the Levitt Amp Series, an assignment for that grant writing class. But they had lots of competition. Why do you think they picked you? Uh, you know what, it, it's the support. Um, you know, it, we, we are the only all volunteer Levitt Amp. Uh, all the rest of them, they'll hire sound people or other people. Um, everybody here in ours is, is completely volunteer. They started small with an army of volunteers. They got to work. Were you worried about that the first time? If, if anybody would show up, yeah. you set it all up, invited well, a band. Absolutely. And, will anyone come? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I when I when I originally started talking about this, people were asking me. They said, you know, how many people do you think are going to come? And I said, well, I don't know, maybe maybe 200. And soon, this small idea was growing. People were coming out of their houses. So what do you think about events like this right here in the middle of your neighborhood? Oh, I think it's wonderful. I think it's just amazing. It gives people a reason to get out on a nice summer evening, get together, listen to music, good food, good friends. When you first heard about the concert series out in the park, what did you think? I thought it was pretty amazing for it to be free. You know, that doesn't happen around cities anymore. More than 700 per show, and their success was getting national attention. Levitt Amp took notice and then made it official. They got the grant to keep growing. When I found out we were getting the Levitt Amp grants, I took the time to list all the cities that were awarded, looked up their population, and was astounded to discover that the average size of a city that gets a concert series like this is 49,000. Galva's 2,600. That's a testament to all the hard work that those people put in for us. Hard work from people like Nancy and Carlin, AKA Town Moms. The artists will come, we treat them like moms and grandmas, and we feed them well, and we make sure they have special treats that they want. Um, we give them goodie bags to take on the road because they eat in gas stations otherwise. So for us to give them something home cooked is a real treat for them. Right. The artists coming in from all over the world with a variety of music from big names with open dates to struggling artists looking to connect. Uh, let's see, we had rock, folk, blues, jazz, zydeco, bluegrass, Celtic, singer-songwriter, Americana. Some of this is music that these people would otherwise never be exposed to, but you look Absolutely. out and you see maybe someone's grandpa jam it out to hip hop just, yeah. Know, you know the yeah hip hop hip hop or whatever <laughs> so yeah. hip hop was that a thing for you before no it was not <laughs> a thing but those those guys were great they were they were so much fun yeah and, and they really you know got along with the kids and brought the kids up on stage which was great and they just really loved it they just yeah and to yeah. have like a grammy winning um, oh, yeah. mexican band come oh. that was fantastic and we've had great blues and just a lot from of Sweden. folk and yeah the yeah. swedish group was great especially oh. with galva's swedish roots right and yeah. it's just been Celtic incredible music, i believe too yes yes yes, yes. yes. Yeah, that's going to be a big one at the end of the and season. And people are year. starting to really be excited. You know, some were going, "Oh, I don't know if I want to go," but now they're just they trust us. They, they do. Know. They just take it in and they go, "I didn't understand a word they said, but I still loved it." So <laughs> I mean, you don't have to understand. You don't to know. And well, and like last year, one of the groups that we brought in was a hip hop group, and that was one I was I was a little bit unsure of. I, I was like, you know, I, I know all these others are going to go over well. I'm not real sure about this one, you know, and I, and I, I said, you know what, I got I have to take the chance. So anyway, we did it and everyone who came had a great time and I think a lot of people were surprised. They said, you know, I never thought I was going to like it. A lot of people told me that afterwards that, that was their favorite group the whole, the whole season. And soon it seemed everyone was on board, including pharmacist and concert volunteer Scott Caravello, who sees this as a way to keep a community healthy, physically and mentally. I love the social aspect that music brings out. Um, the community, um, the companionship, camaraderie, uh, dancing, singing, I mean, music moves. And when you have music, people move. And as a business, 
businessman, a business leader in this community. Why is it why is it important for a town like this to have something like this? It lets people know that we're still alive, we're thriving, we're trying to stay an active community and bring the community together so that we can all keep supporting it. Like the music played here every Sunday all summer long. People believe in their small towns, they cheer for their small towns, they cry for their small towns. And evidence of that is right across the street every Sunday night. A mix track, if you will, finding the best beats from the past. How does it feel for you at the end of the day when you look around and you see the generations of people gathered here listening to music, enjoying a common experience? Uh, that's, the, that's the whole the best part of it is families, people making memories. Uh, when I was gr growing up, I always heard from my parents and grandparents how the downtown here used to be packed every Friday and Saturday night and people going downtown for different events. So we're trying to bring that back again here. Mixing that with a vision for the future. And then you got the moments where the music is just perfect and the night is perfect. Making a place for that magic to happen. It's been pretty proud starting something on grassroots effort that has grown into, into this and perhaps inspiring other communities around the country to, to follow your lead. I hope. You know, I, that's the thing that I always tell people. I'm a normal person. You know, I wake up and I do the same things every day. Uh, you know, and there's nothing, there's nothing magical about it. It's just putting in the time and, and having an open mind. Being able to, to look at someone and say, you know, yeah, that person has something to give and figuring out how to allow them to give what they have, um, whatever their talent might be. And maybe a lot of times they don't even know that they have a talent. But just allowing someone to have a space where they feel comfortable, where they feel like they're able to give something um, is, is very powerful. Find out more at galvamusic.com and levittamp.org or at mativiamedia.com and on our Facebook page, Gary Mativier, The Heart of the Story. And if you like the story, please share with a friend, leave a review, and subscribe to our podcast and our YouTube channel. This is The Heart of the Story with Gary Mativier.